Hi, so my name is Chris Trost. I study physics at the Technical University of Delft in the Netherlands. I wanted to do a bit of a discussion on intelligent design. Kind of an odd topic for a physicist. It's considered a, a, a alternative to evolution, which is of course a biological principle. But uh, I've seen lecture after lecture now where people say like, uh, Evolution starts with this idea of the Big Bang, you know, a cosmic boom from which everything came from. Uh, and that it continues on through the rest of this godless world until you get to this biological evolution, which is, of course, what they are opposed to. Uh, and principally it draws also a bunch of its arguments from thermodynamics, which is also a field of physics that I've, you know, had a sort of classical training in. Uh, statistical mechanics in particular, uh, what's called information theory. If you ever hear information theory, that's what they're uh, evoking. And uh, the basic idea of intelligent design, because I want to give this as even-handed a treatment as possible, is uh, if you look at this uh, box of cotton swabs, you see that they are all in an order. You come to this question of asking, uh, why do they have that order? I want to point out one thing at first, that traditionally theology has been concerned with the box. It's been concerned with existence as a whole, and not so much with uh, the arrangement of this stuff inside. Uh, but intelligent design says that you can infer an intelligent agent just from this pattern, just from all of these things lined up. So far so good. You say this is ordered as opposed to chaotic, and Therefore, there is a design to this. In other words, the creation from chaos of order is a process that I will call design. And anything which brings chaos into order, I will call a designer. That seems to be sort of a straightforward thing. Now, crucially, uh, not all designers necessarily have to be intelligent on that account. They just need to take uh, chaos to order. But uh, the central principle of the intelligent design theory is that uh, this only comes about, this sort of pattern only comes about, uh, because of the action of an intelligent agent. Okay? In brief, there are no unintelligent designers, according to intelligent design, but there is only the intelligent agent who put all of these things in order. Now. That's a little bit peculiar because, well, first off, there's the problem of saying, how do you say that this is in order? You know, how do you measure the order in here? You say, well, we know the purpose of putting these things into this dense packing. It was to fit more and more into this box. So, uh, strictly speaking, there is a lot of, uh, you know, there is a very heavy density in this packing. Uh, the physicist comes in and strict says, strictly speaking, uh, there is no. The density is fixed. There are just n, I don't know how many there are, let's say a hundred. There are a hundred uh, q-tips, or cotton swabs, inside of this box. And that's just it. That's You can't explain uh, why they have a certain uh, density, because they always have the same density. You say, no, they've got a bunch of free space, you see. Well, same problem. Given a hundred q-tips in this box, there will always be exactly a certain amount of free space in there, no matter what configuration they have. Now, uh, you can make it, you can make this line of argumentation work. I don't want to give you the impression that it's impossible to argue it. Uh, the best way to do it is to say, uh, there is all of this free space uh, such that if I were to close this system and shake it, uh, everything would have a lot of room to move about in. Uh, so in that sense, uh, they've created a bunch of free space. They could all move around into that free space. Uh, there's a much simpler way, of course. I'm sure that some of you are screaming at your YouTube screens right now going, well, the reason it's ordered is because they're all lined up. And that's another thing that we could objectively look at and say, how ordered is this system? How much can things move around? How much is stuff lined up? 
So I think that's a good overview of intelligent design. I want to get into at least one nuance about it, which is, strictly speaking, we of course know that uh, an intelligent designer didn't actually uh, sit there with, you know, putting each of these in order. Probably not at any rate. Maybe this was assembled in China. But probably they designed a robot to do it for them. And there, to the extent that that's an objection, there has been a response to that objection saying, uh, well, no, see, the robot was designed by an intelligent designer. The idea is that there could be proxy design by an unintelligent designer on behalf of or designed by an intelligent one. So it cannot any longer be direct. It's not just every design process was directly created. And the reason I bring that up is because at least the Catholic Church I know, and probably other churches as well, they believe that evolution and intelligent design, as it were, are totally compatible with each other because, of course, on their account, evolution is just the robot by which we came to be, but evolution was designed for this purpose by God. Okay, that's... At least there is a bit of nuance in there, and traditional intelligent design theory has kind of rejected this and just said, Look, given designer, you know intelligence. You know, not just given design, there has to be a designer. Because evolutionary biologists will agree that there is a designer to it, in the sense that I've defined a designer. You know, they will certainly agree that there is an explanation, a causal explanation, for why something came about. Uh, they will certainly talk about the cell and organelles in the cell. Uh, in terms of their function and structure and purpose. So I want to get that out there, that shade of nuance. Uh, but broadly speaking, you can say that broadly speaking, uh, all of these information theory ideas and the like come from this fundamental idea that uh, this order means an intelligent designer had to line all of these things up. No random process would have lined them up they would have created a totally random one. So let's create a random process. Like I said, I'm a physicist. This is an experiment that we can do. We're going to shuffle these things up relatively randomly. Should probably put it this over here so that you can see it better. Now I'm going to try to collect them all and put them back in the box. And I'm trying to not bias the direction of the propagation and just, I don't know, I guess I could also go like this, couldn't I? I apologize for creating a YouTube video, which was basically a video of me picking, playing pickup sticks. Uh, okay. We need to pack this down. Close the system. We now have a closed system with a certain amount of disorder in it, and it looks like this. And uh, this is... I said earlier that you could measure it by how much these things wiggle around. You might be able to see or hear that uh, things aren't <laughs> moving very much around in there. And uh, the claim is, now that this is in a random state, there is no random process which could line all of these things up. So let's test it. I should, strictly speaking, shake it around like this, because gravity, of course, points downward. And I don't want to say that gravity is doing my work for me. And if you're listening, you're hearing that there's a bunch more motion that's happening now, now that I am just creating this random process in this box. And at this point, what you'll see is that there's a bunch of free space in the box, and all of these things have lined up. One of those very odd things that uh, it happens in the world around us. It's uh, 
what this is called, just to give you a name for it, this is called the liquid crystal phase of a long linear set of molecules. Uh, so this is a liquid crystal, meaning that everything is flowing, everything is not in a perfect arrangement, but there's still some very large-scale structure that's happening. Uh, both set, set uh, pieces going this way, and there's a little bit of extra space when you pack this way, so some of them are packing together over there. And they're in a sort of dynamic equilibrium as you go around, with gravity pointed totally randomly. In short, this means that you don't need a perfect organization the way that the crystal uh, structure of the original was, with all of them arranged very perfectly in a lattice. We also have lattice structures, crystal structures, uh, in, the, in the rest of our world. Probably the easiest place to look for it is uh, metals. Metals are a good example of a crystal structure. Uh, even though they curve at a very small scale, they have this very regular structure to them. Uh, that's not why they're shiny. They're shiny because they share electrons between atoms and so on. But, uh, I mean rocks as well. You'll see crystal structures in rocks. When you look at salt, you'll see that it has this very squarish structure. Uh, so that's the... That's crystallization, and of course it happens at this scale too, and it happens by totally random processes. What was strictly happening when I start to shake this thing up is that the, uh, the molecules want to have that space to move around. That is a higher entropy state for them to have more elbow room to move around, and so they sacrifice uh, some of their disordered uh, physical position uh, in order to get some of this momentum. Uh, the, the entropy is defined as a space in both position space and momentum space, if you understand what I'm saying. It's called phase space, if you want to know the technical term. So, uh, in conclusion, uh, I think I've just proven at least one of the central tenets of the most conservative notion of intelligent design wrong, which is that there is no information theory idea which will get you to this idea that in a closed box these things cannot spontaneously line up. In fact, they do. And in crystal structures they do even more than that. They create these very regular grids and the like which we use to... Like in a laboratory, we just create very perfect circumstances for crystallization with no noise and let crystallization happen to create these beautiful uh, perfect crystals or to grow nanotubes or the like. Uh, I think I've been speaking for about 10 minutes so I will just say farewell, pursue knowledge, take care. <laughs>